antique copper exhaust hood. In this video, we'll take a galvanized exhaust hood and make it look like an antique copper finish. First, we're going to sand it with 80 grit. This is to get a lot of the grit off and try and get a more even finish. You could get it sandblasted, but here sanding is going to work just fine for our purposes. Now after we sand it, we're going to degrease it, and in this case I'm going to use the isopropyl alcohol to degrease it. And when you do that, you'll need to get the Scotch-Brite pad and scrub it around a little bit and then continuously wipe with the alcohol until it comes off clean. And here we're going to tape off to cover just so we don't get any of the black vinyl on the base of the exhaust vent. We want to cover this with the black vinyl just because it's not going to be really seen. The tube that's going to go onto it is black as well, so I just wanted to blend it in. So we're going to tape it off and uh, just try and protect the base material here. And like I said, we're going to go in with the pearl black vinyl. And that's just to give it another color. We're going to do the pearl black on the inside as well. And then we'll do our copper finish on the outside. Now, the next step isn't entirely necessary. You do not have to heat the material for this process to work. But you will ensure that there's no moisture in the surface, which creates a better bond. Now, I just heated the outside, and then we're going to spray on the inside here. And so it's not really that hot. Uh, but it is a little warm, enough for the moisture to get out. So here you can see we're going in with the pearl black vinyl just to get everything nice and black. Um, you're not really going to see it when it's on the on the wall, except for the person who's working under it. So we just did this to make it nice and simple and easy. Now for the outside, I'm going to use the patina stains. And I'll use the combination of the copper, the brown, and the black. Primarily the copper, obviously. And you can see the, the copper patina stains and all of the metal patina stains actually come in more opaque than the other patina stains, say if you get the brown or the black, the verde. But you still need to make sure that you're not going to create any lines. So you'll see I'll do a little bit and then I'll kind of fog a little bit as well. And that's the trick to the spray cans there because if you're not careful you can get those lines on bigger surfaces. So you can see I go omnidirectional and I'll let this dry a little bit and I'll come back over and help kind of move the patchiness in because the patchiness is generally good. Uh, the patchiness uh, lets us avoid the lines but more so it's going to help give that weathered or aged look. And this is shortly after we did the black. You can see I have a, a helper over on the other side still doing the black and so it's okay for the surface again to be a little bit warm. You don't want it hot because this is essentially a clear coat, a uh, tinted clear coat that is. So if you have moisture trapped underneath, it could cause uh, adhesion problems. It could cause uh, milking. So it could, it could come up a little white on it. So we really want to make sure that we have all that moisture out before we move on to these processes here. And you can see here where I stopped on that that side um, it's got a hard line and a lot of people are really afraid of leaving those lines and for good reasons but the nice thing about the patina stains is that when you go back over them they do try and reconstitute a little bit as long as it's been a, a fairly recent uh, coating so when I go back over them it will try to soften it up and we won't see that line near as much um, especially when we're going for a solid coating. If you have something like the brown or black patina stain again where it's more transparent, you will have to work a lot harder to not show those lines or to cover up those lines if you get them. So that's why I prefer the uh, kind of really mottled and, and foggy look rather than the lines. We'll go ahead and jump ahead a little bit here so you can see the whole thing covered. And you can see I'm just going back in and kind of feathering in a little bit more, just fogging it on. And that's going to help kind of bring everything together. We can still see a lot of modeling, um, and that's what I was going for. I was hoping to have a lot of movement on it. I didn't want a solid sheet of copper because um, we want the brown and black to ride off of that as well. We're going to go really thin with the brown and black to start with and try and just make it more of a subtle put approach and try and push the color a little bit by a little bit. And once we finish with the copper, we're going to go in with the brown patina stain. So here I'm going to try and go in a little 
kind of uh, I'm trying to go thin, but I want to be able to see the coating show up. You can go thin enough to where you can hardly even see the application. So you just got to make sure that you're still getting it all on the material and that we're getting a layer down. Um, but you can see um, I like to hit the sides to make it a little bit more prominent, but then in the middle I like to shake it a lot and get it a little bit more foggy. And again, that comes out more mottled and more, uh, almost more patchy, but it tends to look better on these kind of things where you're trying to make it so it is almost turning a color rather than um, a copper piece that's already turned the antique color. And after the brown, I'm going to go to the black, but the uh, sun was killing me, so I went ahead and shut the door. So that's a change in color there. And uh, here we're going with the black, and I'm going to do the same thing. The trick with the black is you really got to make sure you go on thinner, even thinner than the brown, because the, th the black can push you a little too far if you're not careful. Uh, it can make it take something that's aging nicely up to it's aged already. So it really comes down to, you know, how dark you want it and a really dark one can look very good so it all depends on what you're going for but that black can sneak up on you quickly so make sure you uh, just pay attention to where you're at and you're consistent through the whole piece and right after I was done with the black coat we went ahead and opened the door up for the ventilation it's really most important is ventilation here you can see I've got my respirator on and I've got a fan actually blowing from one side out as well just to make sure we're we're not fogging up the room here uh, so make sure you take those steps and making sure that you you can see I've typed off some stuff so we don't have any coatings over spray um, but here I'm going back with the brown patina stain to help kind of model it up a little bit and darken it up a little bit more than I could take it with the black and here I'm heating it and it's been about two hours since I coated the last patina stain and you can see that a little bit of moisture has retained in the surface so that's why I'm heating it because when we go with the clear we want to make sure that we have a completely dry surface and so you don't want to do this too soon because patina stain is a flammable uh, substance it is essentially a tinted clear guard so we want to make sure that we don't ignite it so just make sure you give it enough time and you can do this this step and we're gonna go in with the Everclear matte now now the Everclear matte is our two-part polyurethane and it's the strongest coating that we offer. Here we're going to shoot it with our Iwata HTE3 and you can find these guns on our web store. Um, it's a really nice lacquer gun. It's good for um, spraying most of our clears, uh, the ClearGuard and Everclear in particular and it's got a 1.2 tip and usually I shoot it in between 18 and 25 pounds of pressure and that's just enough to get it looking kind of like an aerosol can that's what you're looking for and we can get a really nice coating here and when I'm spraying you can kind of see it developing here as he passes you want to see the coating develop so you want to make sure that you're getting a wet coat to where it's not running but you can visually see that you got it on there and then you got a solid coating. and here we have our antique copper exhaust hood on the wall installed and ready to go Patina stains, vinyl resin, and Everclear are all available at www.sculptnouveau.com.